Puppy. You see my dog? That's Emma. Emma, do you have anything to say? Wow. That's so rude. Anyways, hi. Uh, I'm Fly Pattern. This is like, I guess technically like my first real YouTube video. Um, so in it, I'm going to show how I made this uh, cardigan. It's the Harry Styles J.W. Anderson cardigan. Uh, I've seen a lot of people making it. Usually like a lot of people are crocheting it right now. Kind of jumping on the trend, which I think I'm actually a little bit late to it. Because that's typical me. I'm late to many trends. I, I'm not fully in the internet, you know? Um, my memes are probably outdated as well. Anyways, uh, I made this on a loom because that's all I know how to do. I don't know how to crochet. I don't know how to knit with needles. All I know is how to knit things on a loom. And I haven't seen anybody actually make this sweater that way. So I just wanted to do like a little tutorial. Uh, it's not a great tutorial because I don't know how to explain things very well. Uh, so yeah. This probably won't help much, but maybe a little. Um, but before we get into the video, uh, I just wanted to talk about this channel a little bit, I guess, since this is like my first real YouTube channel. I've done a couple like speed drawing videos on here, but I want to turn this into like a crafting channel, maybe. I don't know. I don't have exact plans for this channel, but I know I want to do something. I would like to do YouTube videos, so I thought this would be a good jumping off point. Just like, because I was already planning on making this anyway, so I was like, hey, why don't I just put it on YouTube, you know? Um, so like, yeah. Hopefully you'll see some things from me in the future. I might make like clay things, DIY, maybe some draw with me, sketchbook tours, stuff like that. I don't know. Who knows with me, really? Uh, my interests change daily. So there's no telling what's going to happen with this channel, to be perfectly honest. Also, sorry if the quality of the videos aren't great for a while. Uh, I'm just doing this on my iPhone because I don't have a camera and cameras are expensive. So yeah, you get iPhone quality videos. Same with the audio. I have a shitty microphone right now, so you get shitty audio quality too. But yeah, so enjoy the video. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Is that the YouTuber thing to say? Uh, yeah, like, comment, and subscribe if you would like to stick around, see what I have to offer, I guess. Uh, be some more content on the way in the future, I hope. Enjoy the video! I'm just gonna do a very simple explanation. I am in no way an expert at knitting. Uh, I'm just doing a very simple knit stitch. You know, you can follow along if you want. I'm very much a beginner. This is just how I'm doing it. That's all I'm showing you. This is a sort of a tutorial, but take it with a grain of salt. I don't even know the proper terms or anything like that. This is just how I did it. Also, sorry if you can hear my dog in the background. Uh, I have wood floors and she has long nails and she likes to tippy tap. So. Also, if you're going to be knitting, uh, these squares, you're gonna have to do a lot of them. I would highly recommend that you listen to a podcast or something while you do it. I have, like, trouble with podcasts, but I found that, uh, whenever I'm knitting, listening to podcasts is super easy because it doesn't take a whole lot of focus to knit, so I can just listen to whatever podcast I'm listening to. Whenever I was knitting this cardigan, I binge listened to the Magnus Archives, which is a great podcast. I would highly recommend that one. I'm going to attempt to show you how I knit 
the squares and I'm gonna do it on a loom. So first things first, you need a loom. Uh, the loom should have at least 14 pegs. See, I got that marked off here because I'm making my squares about 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So 14 pegs I've found does the trick with that. And you don't have to do this, but I found this helpful. This is a little trick that I learned from loomhat.com on YouTube. And that is that you take a piece of yarn and you measure it to the length that you want your square to be. And you just put it on like the second to last peg of what you're knitting. And that way it helps you keep track of how long you're making your square instead of having to count rows or stopping and getting out your measuring tape and measuring every few rows. So the second thing that you need, of course, is yarn. I use a super bulky size six and it's just a Bernat brand. I just use the cheapest yarn that I can find. I'm not too picky. You also need scissors, of course. You need a hook, and I use measuring tape, but you can also just use a ruler just to help you with your measurements. So I'll show you how I begin. I start like anybody else starts these things by making a slip knot. And then we're just going to Put that slip knot on the anchor peg right there. Pull it pretty tight. Not so tight that you can't get it off though. And we're just going to wrap all 14 pegs until you get to the last one. And then we're just going to cast on by a flat knitting I think I don't know the proper terminology I think this is called a flat knit I basically am just like halfway wrapping around the peg and then I'm just taking that bottom loop and putting it over the top loop and knitting it and it's gonna be a little hard with this first row because we want it to be nice and tight so make sure you kind of tighten your yarn as you go and I just push down my working yarn about halfway down the peg whenever I'm done with it as I go. Just like that. And you're gonna do that with all of them and I'll meet you back at the end. So I just cast on that first peg that we started with and now we're gonna start knitting. So to start knitting, first of all, with each row, you're going to skip that first peg and you're gonna continue on to the second peg in this row. And you're just going to go behind the peg and wrap it like that. And just go ahead and wrap all the pegs that we're knitting until you reach the 14th peg. Go ahead and wrap that. And I just kinda anchor it around this 15th peg right here just to keep everything in place. And like I said, this first row is probably going to be a little tough just because it's so tight. But you knit that one and push down, knit, and push down, knit, and push down. And you do that until you get back to that first peg. So I'll meet you back there. Okay, so I just knit this second to last peg. So then to start the second row, we're gonna go back to this 14th peg. And remember with each new row, we skip the first peg. So we're gonna go back and wrap it the other way. So that first peg, anchor it around this other peg and then knit all these and push down as you go 
and you're just going to continue to go back and forth like that until you've reached your desired length measuring this little strip of yarn that we got here and uh whenever i'm done with that i'll show you how i cast off so i finished this square i'm at the length that i want measures about even with that so now i'm going to show you how i cast off so we're at the last peg here then you're just going to knit these first two pegs. You're basically just gonna like halfway wrap it around the peg at the top and then bring the bottom loop over the top, knit that one, then knit this second peg here. And then what you're going to do is take the loop off of that second peg and move it back to the first and then knit that and then take the loop and put it back on that second peg and then you're just going to continue to do that knit the second peg take the loop off put it on the first and then knit that and then move the yarn to that second peg and you're going to continue to do that all the way around make sure that while you're doing this you're not pulling your working yarn too tight or else it will cause the edge of it to be scrunched if it's a little scrunched it's okay because we can just kind of yank it back into place but just try not to pull it too tightly and just continue on okay so we're at the last two pegs now so you're gonna go ahead and knit that first peg, bring the loop over, and then knit that, and go ahead and wrap it one more time, and knit that, and then we're just going to snip off right there, and pull the rest of that yarn through. And there you go. Got a square. Okay, and then what I do with these loose strands is I just loop it through right here. And then just make a little knot just to keep it secure and then I'll do the same down here And if you want, you can weave these loose strands into the rest of the square. I'm just gonna leave them out because I'm gonna sew all these together anyways. And whenever I do that, I can just cut these loose strands off. So now you should have a 15 by about 15 square. So now I've just got to knit about a billion of those, so let's uh, get right into that.
Okay, so I finished knitting all the squares. Um, I have 10 of each solid color, and then I did six for the houndstooth pattern. Um, and I'm not gonna show how I knit the houndstooth pattern just because I don't think that I would be able to explain very well how I did it or show it very well. Uh, I would really recommend a, a tutorial by Good Knit Kisses. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for that video. That's how I learned how to do it. And it's actually like not that hard. Uh, once you get the rhythm of it, it's pretty easy. Uh, so yeah, if you want to try that out for yourself, I'll leave a link for that video in the description. But yeah, so now all I need to do is put these together in a pattern that I like and then sew them all together. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so this is what we got. I put all the squares together in a fashion that I liked. Uh, I basically, I didn't follow any specific pattern with it. I just made sure that none of the same color squares are touching each other on all sides. You got the front right here, and then you got the back up there at the top, and you got the two sleeves. Now, we're just gonna pin it all together, all the squares, and we're gonna have a sweater. Oh, and I gotta do the, um, the bottom trim and the sleeve cuffs and the blue down the middle. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin them all together and we will come back when I'm done with that. Okay, real quick, I just want to show you, like, how I measured that the sleeves would fit me. I'm goofy as shit, check this out. <laughs> this is how I did it. I literally just, put. Look. Yeah, that's pretty good. Crucify me. I'm ready. Don't smite me, Jesus. I swear, I'm on your side. <laughs> okay, so I got one side pin that took fucking ever. I'm gonna go ahead. I already started sewing this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start sewing. I still gotta pin like all of those, but we're on our way. Okay. Hello. I'm back. Uh, so I went ahead and pinned them, and then I sewed. I got these two bits done, and I got both of the sleeves done. Look at these. Look at these guys. So big. Okay. Oh, excuse me, puppy. I have a, a puppy. So I'm just sewing now. It's gonna take a long time. So join me on the floor while I destroy my back sewing all of this together. Also, did I wear the same outfit two days in a row so that you would think that it's the same day? Mayhaps. But we're not gonna worry about that. Look like a little, little farmer boy. Okay, let's get this sewing. She's gonna help me. You gonna help me? You help me sew? And set to Mannequin set up like a ring mistress. two front pieces and the sleeves done. So now all that's left to do is bring all of them together and then I have to knit the trim at the bottom, the blue trim at both sides of the opening at the front, the collar, and the sleeve cuffs. So I'm gonna start on that. Might take me a day or two, 
But yeah, it's gonna be a big comfy sweater. I'm excited. All right, I'm just gonna show you guys how to do the trim pieces real quick. Um, so I've already started this one. It is the blue trim that goes on the inside of the two front pieces. Uh, and I just did a basic knit for this one. Uh, I kind of did it just like how I did the, uh, the colored squares. The only difference is that I only did it on five pegs because I didn't want it to be as wide. As you can see, it's only uh, about three fingers width, which that's about what I wanted. And then I just keep knitting back and forth uh, on these five pegs until I get the length that I want, which I measured about 78 centimeters. So yeah, and I'm just gonna do two of these. And this is basically what I did for the collar of the cardigan as well, except I did it in red. Uh, I forgot to film that part. <laughs> and I just measured how uh, long the neck hole was whenever I stretched it out. Uh, and then I just knitted it to that length. Okay, so for the bottom trim, it's a little bit more complicated than just a simple knit. Uh, I basically just, I knit in purl because I wanted to get these ridges. Uh, so I just knit two rows and I purl two rows and I'll show you how I do that real quick. So I've got two rows knit and then to purl, all that you do is you take your working yarn you put it under the loop and then you take your hook from the top of the loop and pull your working yarn through and then you pull the loop off of the peg and put the new loop back on. I'm sure that <laughs> you probably couldn't see that very well. There's a lot better tutorials to show you how to like the different knit stitches and how to purl and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I just purl two rows. So I've only got one peg purled, but I do that for two rows and then I knit two rows and I just keep going like that back and forth until I get the desired length. Um, so I, uh, this is the bottom trim. So it's gotta be pretty long. I measured about 90 centimeters. Just gonna keep going like that. And then this is also the technique that I used for the sleeve cuffs. And for that, I didn't have exact measurements. I just kept knitting and wrapping this part around my wrist until it fit not too snug, but just a little bit snug so that I know that the sleeves would stay in place. And then I already attached them to the sleeves and I'll show you that right now. So here's one sleeve. Uh, it's got the, the sleeve cuffs on it. And to do this, as you can see, it kind of scrunches into the sleeves. And to attach them, basically what I did is uh, I threaded some yarn through the second row of the squares and I pulled them tight until the end of the sleeve scrunched up and I made it scrunch up enough that it fit the width of the cuff. And then I put the cuff inside out on top of the sleeve, just like that. And then I just sewed it on and that's how I did them. Uh, I wish I had filmed that, but I <laughs> was just like in the zone and I kind of forgot. So yeah, I just need to finish the bottom trim and then the two uh, front piece trims and then the cardigan will be done. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll update you guys <laughs> once it's finished, I guess. Okay, <laughs> so I did it. Um, I finished, I finished it. And I'm gonna show you now. It's, it's pretty big, but that's how I wanted it. But yeah. Take a look at this shit. Here it is. Look at it. Pretty cool. <laughs> so happy. So yeah, uh, came out pretty good. I think this is my first sweater I've ever made. So pretty good for a first time, I think. So couple things. 
Uh, it did come out a little bit bigger than I was expecting, but I don't mind that. I like that it's pretty big. I, I'm very happy with it. Uh, I'm excited. I'm gonna wear this whenever it gets cold. It's really, really warm. Mm, I'm just so happy with it. It looks so good. Uh, I love the colors. They look awesome. Uh, I might at some point, like, it's basically done. I mean, it is done. If I wanted to stop here, I could. Might add some buttons at some point. Um, I got a couple of like these bigger buttons and they're kind of shiny. So I think that those will look good on them. So I might do that at some point. I don't know, still debating. I also might add pockets because I keep wanting to like put my hands in something because that's that's what I always do whenever I'm wearing a big sweater uh, or a hoodie or something. I always want to put my hands in my pockets because I'm a shy little boy. Um, I'm very happy with how this turned out. Uh, so yeah, um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're trying to make this yourself, I hope, I hope my video helped at least a little. I'm not very good at tutorials, so I'm sorry, but hopefully I can, you know, just kind of, yeah, this wasn't really meant specifically as a tutorial. I just wanted to show how I did it. So I didn't show me sewing everything. Uh, I didn't show how I made like the collar or the sleeve cuffs and stuff, but you know, um, I'll link a couple videos that like really helped me get a handle on how to make this. Uh, I followed a couple videos by lumahat.com here on YouTube, Good Knit Kisses, uh, there was another one, Brunetticality, I think she did crocheting, but she was the one that kind of like where I based my pattern off of. Uh, so yeah, I'll link their videos down below just so like maybe you can get a better grasp on it. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm hoping to do more videos and stuff in the future. I would love to like be just a YouTuber. I think it'd be kind of fun. Uh, this was definitely really fun. I hope people like it. So yeah. So yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe, you know, stick around. Uh, hopefully you'll see some things in the future. Fly pattern signing off. Fucking serious.